I think that brings us here. Hey, everybody. My name is Mike Shepard, and welcome to today's Ask Men Special Edition Google Hangout, brought to you by Lexus. Today, we're talking tech. In fact, more specifically, today we're talking all the upgrades you could possibly want for all that guy gear that you have going forward in 2014. Years behind us, it's time to upgrade. I know it hurts, but we're going to make it as painless as possible for you guys. So how did we do that? We brought one of the best experts we can find here to talk a little bit to us about these upgrades. Mark Saltzman, syndicated technology columnist. Mark, tell us why you're the man for this job. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, thrilled to be here and love working with AskMen.com. Uh, so I'm a syndicated columnist with USA Today's family, Gannett. So along with writing for USA Today, I also contribute to Yahoo. I write for MSN, uh, Costco Magazine, AARP, uh, and I also do a lot of TV and radio work, so I, I contribute to CNN and uh, First Business out of Chicago, as well as other stations. I've written 15 books, my last one being Siri for Dummies, and, uh, you know, my whole goal, uh, Mike, is to break down geek speak into street speak. Uh, it might say technology evangelist on my business card, but I really try to see myself as a technology translator. Looking forward to the chat today. I think I don't have time to check all those credentials online when we're live here, Mark. I'm going to have to take your word for it, but it sounds to me like you are the man for the job. So let's jump right in. I know one of the most favorite gadgets that guys love to buzz about and compare notes are tablets. So let's talk tablets. Tell us where we were last year. Tell us where we're going this year. Sure. I'm, I know all of our viewers are familiar with the very mainstream ones like the iPads and the Samsungs, but really last year we loved the uh, Razer Edge gaming uh, tablet, so really ideal for, for players who uh, want to take their gaming to the next level. That was in 2013. This year we, we really like the new ThinkPad 8 from Lenovo. This is more of a business grade tablet, an 8.3 inch super slim high def tablet powered by Windows. It's uh, you, you really have to check out the new Windows 8.1 platform. It's very versatile and this is like an amazing machine with a lot of memory under the hood uh, as well as capacity so you, it's, it goes up to 128 gigabytes of storage. You can even throw in a micro SD card for even more. It's it's got you know USB and micro HDMI if you want to output it to a TV. So just a, a, a gorgeous flat Windows 8.1 power tablet from Lenovo, the ThinkPad 8. I can't even imagine what else I would possibly need from any tool or even a human being at this point. But let's talk alternatives. There's always alternatives. Tell us about another option for the guys out there. Sure. So this was uh, just unveiled at the uh, Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. It's the Sony Xperia Z2. So this is a waterproof tablet that uh, will debut probably by the summer, so it could be submerged in water for a while. So great for those who uh, love to take it out on a boat or, you know, you're hanging out by a lake and you want to read an ebook or watch a video. It um, also, ha it, it's still billed as the world's thinnest 10-inch tablet and lightest 10-inch tablet, which is carried over from last year as well. Great product from Sony. All right, well, once we're done with tablets, obviously the next thing we need to be looking at are laptops. Not everybody's got their tablet uh, working, so sometimes you've got to go with the, uh, the more traditional thing. So where were we last year? Where are we headed? Where are we upgrading to? Sure. So tab uh, laptops are still relevant. They've got a physical keyboard, for, so it's great for getting your work done, a larger screen, and more memory. Last year we really liked the Samsung Series 7 Kronos. PC. This was a, a Windows laptop. This year it's the LG Ultra PC. It's not out yet, but I've had some heads, hands on time with it. This is uh, one of the thinnest and lightest laptops available, so there's no trade off. It's a 13.3 inch HD laptop that weighs just 2.1 pounds. Uh, and again, very fast Intel Core processor, uh, giving you amazing performance, and it sips rather than gulps power. So you're getting all-day performance, uh, full HDMI ports, USB 3.0 uh, ports as well, an amazing laptop for work and play. Well, the power part is definitely something I think a lot of guys are interested in. We all know a certain other laptop company that we everyone kind of stresses about that, you know, when you're taking long trips, so that's great. What about this guy, this other alternative we have? You might talk to us about this. Yeah, so, <clears throat> excuse me, the runner-up, if you will, is from Asus. This company's been on fire for the last couple of years, and this is their Transformer Book Trio. It is three products in one. It's a tablet, laptop, and desktop, so you can use it how, where, uh, and, and like how you like to use your computer, whether it's with a keyboard, a stylus pen, your fingertips, in a, in a variety of settings. So that's a great one to consider if you're not sure what form factor to invest in. All right, well, let's go into one of the more, uh, I'd say one of the newer types of tech that we're talking about. Forget upgrade. This almost feels like a completely new grade of technology is, is wearable tech. What is happening in this world for us, Mark? 
Right, so wearable tech is poised to be a huge category, and under that umbrella is fitness bracelets. So we, we're familiar with the Nike Fuel Band Plus SE. We're familiar with the Fitbit, which was our pick from last year, the Fitbit Force and the Fitbit Flex. And now this year, there's one that you're you're definitely going to love when it comes out by the summer called the Jaybird Rain, R-E-I-G-N. And it is the reigning champ of fitness bracelets because not only will it calculate your steps and give you total distance and calories burned, but it knows if you're walking, running, cycling, or swimming. It's a full waterproof wristband that also has a heart rate monitor built in. So it's integrated with sensors right underneath the fitness band. Uh, of course, there's a, a companion app for mobile devices to track your performance, set goals. There's a whole gamification element that gives you motivation. Uh, it's going to be under 100, under 200 bucks when it comes out this summer. Okay, so I guess this is what we've got here right behind me. Why don't we take a look at another alternative as this market keeps growing. What about these guys? So we're looking here at the Garmin Vivo Fit. This was unveiled at the 2014 Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. And uh, this is uh, Garmin, best known for their GPS products. This is their take on fitness bracelets. It has two differentiating features, Mike. One is the fact that it's got an, uh, a full year battery built in. The problem with the Fitbit is that you have to charge it up every three or four days. This has a user removable battery. It lasts about a year. Secondly, it has what's called an inactivity meter. So if you're sitting idle for a long period of time, you're fitness band is going to tell you to get up off your butt and get active. I think I have to interrupt you because it actually, mine just went off right now for the fifth time today, so I really have to get <laughs> moving. That sounds like a, a wearable tech I might really want to invest in. I want to know how much inactivity is part of my life, definitely, so keep an eye on that. I know you're being sarcastic, but it is it is kind of neat to see how how long you are sitting in one place for a while. Well, actually, I just don't want to know it. I think it just sounds bad news, but it is very interesting to. to I think it'll motivate some people to actually get off their butt and do a little bit more once they become hyper aware of that, right? That's the whole point. Um, so let's talk another piece of tech that I'm not really much of an expert. I don't think a lot of guys are. It's almost a, I feel like it's a bit niche, but a lot of guys do love to listen to their tunes. Headphones. There seem to be so many options in headphones. So what's a key upgrade for me to be looking at this year? That's right. If you're spending all your time only in a big box store, you're only seeing a small sampling of some of the cool audio gear that you can be listening to while you're you're walking around town. So we really love these uh, Westone's W60s. This is uh, so last year we went with the the big sort of over the ear style, which was and still is trendy. But now you're getting smaller uh, earbud style uh, that's coming back, but without sacrificing performance. So this is a very high end, very premium uh, set of earbuds that has six individual drivers in each earbud. So amazing lows, mids, and highs, very well balanced, full range, in something so small that you can slip into your ear. Uh, an amazing craftsmanship. This company's been around since 1959. Uh, amazing clarity. Anybody who's ever put these in their ears are blown away by the power and the clarity and the uh, balance, the well-balanced audio. Uh, not cheap, mind you, but uh, definitely the, the highest and amazing sounding earbuds we can find. Great for smartphones, tablets, laptops, and dedicated music players. I think the earbuds is a great way to go for a lot of people. It's a little bit less ostentatious. It's not as it's not as showy. If you can maintain that same quality, I think a lot of guys are obviously going to be super down with that. So that's that's great. But awesome. let's look at it. another alternative here that we got. Speaking of going back into that kind of more traditional headphone that you see a lot of guys wearing these days, what about this alternative? Sure. So if you do prefer an on-ear or over-the-ear style earphone, uh, then definitely Klipsch is also a company with a lot of heritage. They've been around for 60-odd years. And this is a set of Bluetooth headphones. It's the Image One from Klipsch. And, uh, you know, so you're cutting the cord. Bluetooth, as you know, Mike, is the universal standard. It'll work with any kind of smartphone, tablet, or laptop that has Bluetooth. And that's almost all of them. And uh, it just lets you cut the cord and enjoy your tunes or podcasts or audiobooks untethered. All right, well, let's talk about audio, but bringing it closer to home. And I say that as an intro because if you were to look at this photo behind me, you probably wouldn't really even know what you were looking at this device if I walked into your home, Mark. So why don't you clarify for us, what is this behind me? Sure. So the Clearview Clio is that product, and that is proof that people want fashion and function together, or style meets substance, if you will. So this is a curved wireless speaker for your home that uses Bluetooth connectivity. So again, it'll work with any kind of uh, Bluetooth-enabled smartphone or tablet uh, or PC uh, and other devices. But more importantly, it's a conversation piece because of the style. Check this out. As you can see with that picture behind you, it yeah, why don't I jump in right here and you can see it, because right now what I'm looking at really is kind of so nondescript, I don't even know what this is when we first look at it, right? 
Right, so the Clearview Clio uses a one millimeter thin sheet of acrylic glass to create the sound, and it's powered by a two inch woofer and stereo speakers behind it. So it's got that unique design, it's got that curved look to it, three different colors, silver, dark, bronze, and charcoal, uh, and it fills the room as well. So it's one of those speakers that you truly can't sort of detect where the sound is coming from. It could even fill up a large room with great sounding and well-balanced uh, audio from your uh, favorite uh, device. So again, it's a it's a great little product, uses Bluetooth connectivity. All right, well, let's look at another option in the world of home audio that is maybe a little less, uh, you know, nondescript and a bit more, looks, this one at least a little, looks a little bit more like a speaker, actually. So what, do you, what what's this one? Yeah, so again, it's uh, another example of a, a conversation piece that you might put in your home that sounds great. It's the Libratone Loop, and it is a circular, as you can see, a circular speaker that has uh, a material covering it. So you can change the covers. It's a different types of materials to suit your decor. Uh, but instead of using Bluetooth, it uses DLNA and which, uh, as well as AirPlay, I should say. So if you're an Apple fan, you may want to use the Libratone, Libratone loop in your home. Uh, again, sounding great, or your home office as well. Okay, so we definitely have some options in the home audio world. Now, I've been waiting to get to this one, Mark. Most guys, what do they love to talk about when they talk about their man caves? The television. So this is big. A lot of riding on this one. What do we do this year for our television needs if we want to go crazy and really upgrade? Right, so last year we talked a lot about 4K or ultra high definition television, so uh, four times the resolution of an HD picture, and that's still going to be a trend we're going to see in the years to come, but we chose a new panel technology uh, for this year's pick. It's the, the Samsung S, uh, five, sorry, S9C. This is a 55-inch curved OLED screen. OLED stands for organic light emitting diode. So instead of a screen that has a backlight, like a traditional LE, uh, LCD or a plasma, each individual pixel is its own light source. So when you want to see black, it just goes off. So it's truly, truly dark, unprecedented contrast ratios. So really white, bright whites and rich colors, vibrant, as well as super dark blacks to give you uh, more depth. In fact, it gives you as close to 3D as you can without wearing glasses. And it's concave. As you can see, it's a curved television set. So this actually is bent towards the user, much like a movie theater screen is, to really immerse you in the picture. One other really cool thing here, Mike, is that it supports something called multi-view. Two people can watch two different things at the same time on the same TV. You so know, Mark, I've heard about that technology before. I'm, I've, we got to take a little uh, detour here because I, I, I don't even understand how that works. All right, so imagine you and I are both on the same couch. We're wearing a pair of 3D glasses with earbuds. You can be seeing one picture, and I can be seeing another picture on the same TV and listening to something different, including Blu-ray and 3D content as well, all in HD. So the way it works is because there's so many pixels packed in there, and because the technology is so powerful, it's able to show two different things at once. If you don't wear glasses, you can see both, but the pixels are so packed together that when you wear the glasses, you're still getting HD out of both eyes. So it looks amazing. So that's called multi-view. It's I, a Samsung. I, it. I think you actually just reduced the divorce rate with that update of technology around the world in one shot. That's a yeah, sounds that's like right. an amazing attack. Now, let's give an alternative on this side in terms of the TV that may not have that capacity, but we are looking at another one here. Yeah, so uh, if you believe bigger is better, then uh, definitely you're going to want these new 4K TVs. I also picked this from Samsung. I think their panels are unbelievable. So a great television. This is a, an Ultra HD TV that uh, uses LED technology, so there's still a backlight, but a huge panel, and it just looks gorgeous, um, and size is all the way up to 85 inches, so really great stuff. All right, everyone likes bigger is better. I agree. When it comes to TVs, we all love that. Now, here's another world of technology that a lot of guys may or may not want to admit to all their friends that they are super obsessed with in the privacy at home. Let's talk gaming upgrades here. What am I looking at? What's the next big thing? All right, so the next big thing is called Oculus Rift. This is a virtual reality headset. It may slip into 2015, mind you, but uh, there's definitely some developer units out there and at all the big conventions, uh, excuse me, gamers can get their, their hands on it. So you put it over your head and it simulates a full 360 degree environment. So there's a lot of gaming applications. So when you're playing a game like a 3D shooter, you're still holding a controller, but now it's your entire perspective, your entire view, even behind you, is all digitally mapped out. So it really puts you in the game. And when you move your head around in your chair, it does follow the camera around with you. So it's as if you're really there. It's mind-blowing technology. In my opinion, it's far more impressive than what 
PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are delivering, which is just more of the same. This is a unique take on it using VR, virtual reality, and uh, there's a lot of buzz about this product. I guess they probably sell those inactivity Fitbits with these. <laughs> nice, I can't nice. my hands on one of those. I'm not going very far because it sounds pretty incredible, but let's go to another level. What's another alternative in the world of gaming? What is this device? So Steam is uh, a very popular platform for PC gamers to uh, download digital content onto their computers. And uh, at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas in January, the company announced uh, what we've been expecting for a long time is to expand that platform to TVs. So now you're able to play your favorite PC games on a TV with a console-like controller, and there's a lot of different companies that are making what are referred to as Steam machines, running this platform that they've got, and access to that digital store to download thousands of titles. This one that we're looking at here is from Steam themselves, or I believe it might be an Alienware picture. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, actually looking at it, I don't yeah. know if that's exactly now, the same so Alienware, which is owned by Dell, is one of the many companies creating Steam machines, but the company themselves uh, are also releasing their own box, so that's something to watch for, too. Wow, yeah, yet another reason to kind of just uh, park myself. I like it. Now, cameras is definitely something I think a lot of guys are, you know, they enjoy using. Everyone has a camera on their phone, but, you know, a lot of guys I see kind of getting back into the idea of taking the camera out and taking some photos. Uh, even some of my friends are trying to do that. Where do I look to get really make sure that I'm getting a great product this year? Yeah, it's a great question, and, you know, it's no secret that we are reaching for our smartphones, and that's fine for taking, you know, spontaneous shots, you want to do a Vine, you want to take a selfie, it's great for that, you know, in the moment thing, when you're out with your buddies or what have you, but for those special moments in life, those milestones, those once-in-a-lifetime events, you definitely should be using something better to, to immortalize those moments. So this year we chose the Sony A6000. This is not an SLR or single lens reflex camera. It is a mirrorless or otherwise known as interchangeable uh, or sorry compact system camera that does still let you swap lenses, but it's a much smaller body. So it's an interchangeable lens camera that uh, is the that has the fastest autofocus out of any APS-C system out there. 0 0.06 seconds to focus, and then Mark, there's like a hundred. I'm going to jump in. Like, how big actually is this camera? Can you show us with your hands? You say it's not that big. Yeah. I'm curious. So it's a little bit bigger than a uh, point-and-shoot camera, but certainly smaller and lighter than a full-size DSLR that you would typically wear around your neck on a lanyard. So it's actually quite compact. And then the, depending on what lens you've got on it, of course, it will add a little bit of size and weight. But it does support a number of lenses. Sony has done a, an amazing job with their uh, mirrorless camera systems, rivaling the more expensive SLRs. Uh, you've got 11 frames per second burst mode, and you're not, you are still getting wireless connectivity, Mike. So it, no, it's not a smartphone, but it's got built-in Wi-Fi and NFC, so you can instantly share those memories that you've uh, shot. And that's of course, goes for both photography and for video shooting as well. That's a good piece of information to have. I would not even have thought that I could upload. I mean, that might actually have an impact on some people, whether or not they would carry these. They just love to have that immediate success. So let's look at this. What other options do we have? What are we looking at here? Yeah, so this is another uh, great interchangeable lens camera, uh, not an SLR, it's a mirrorless system, so there's no prism or a mirror inside. It's from Panasonic, it's the Lumix GF6, and it has uh, um, you know, just an amazing sensor, so you're getting very uh, great looking shots, even in low light conditions, and it's got a swivel LCD screen on the back, so the OLED screen will move around, so if you're at a concert, put it over your head, and then you can tilt the LCD screen down, or you're taking a shot of a, a toddler running around, you can stand and kneel down and turn the screen upwards instead of downwards. So very versatile little camera there. That yeah, looks great. Sounds good. All right, we talked about a lot of, you know, kind of smaller gear. We're going to move into a big category. I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Let's talk cars for a second. What is the big car grade you think a lot of people are talking about this year? Yeah, so as you can see behind you, it's the, the Lexus CT Hybrid. And, uh, you know, last year we chose a Lexus as well. Just, a, you know, an outstanding, best-in-class uh, car. This is the, the world's first luxury hybrid hatchback. And that hatchback in the back, by the way, is huge. You can fit 30 cubic, there's 30 cubic feet of space back there. But uh, more importantly, it's extremely energy efficient and energy conscious. 70% less, uh, fewer emissions than a gas or a diesel car. Yet, it has uh, some of the best fuel consumption out of any hybrid avail available on the road, out of any luxury car that you can find these days. Uh, so it does have a 1.8 liter engine as well as the battery. Uh, what, what, so as a tech guy, though, Mike, I, I really like some of the technologies, like, for example, adaptive cruise control. So it's got, you know, radar and other sensors that will detect how far and how uh, far away and how fast 
the car in front of you is going. So on the highway, on the freeway, it'll know to slow you down or speed up accordingly to keep you at a safe distance. It's an assistive technology. It's, amazing. it's getting to the point where I really don't even have to drive. I'm just going to sit there like it's like some Schwarzenegger movie from the future, and it's just going to take care of all my thinking and brain power. I like this. I like where this Good is enough. Going. Soon enough, Mike. That's that's often referred to as uh, you know an autonomous vehicle or self-driving vehicle. This falls into the semi-autonomous vehicle category. So we're getting there. Uh, okay. Another cool piece of technology, by the way, before we end off, is uh, there's an app store developed just for this vehicle. So you can download a number of different apps that uh, helps a user with their smartphone or tablet stay you know in touch with the car to see what's going on under the hood, find out where you know nearby uh, gas stations are and and the electric uh, meters and levels and all that, all on a nearby smartphone. So uh, pretty cool technology for uh, this uh, Lexus CT Hybrid. Yeah, I think what you're talking about there, I think it's only a matter of timing. More and more cars in the luxury area are going to start to get into that because it's such a such a convenient thing and such a thing we've become so dependent upon that I think we don't even really know how to kind of operate some of the older ways when we get in our car that I, I look forward to seeing more of that in cars. So we kind of saved one of the big ones for last of this top 10, so I kind of wanted to save this one for the end because it is one of the bigger questions that everyone gets into. It's time to talk phone. This might take a little longer because, you know, this, there's so many things to a phone. It's, a, it's our personal kind of status signifier. It's a bit of a fashion item, but it's all about the tech at the end of the day, Mark. So where am I going this year with my phone? Yeah. So you're absolutely right. I, I would argue that a smartphone is arguably the most important device that you carry along with you. So it is the most critical piece of tech. It's your lifeline to your world. And now it, they've morphed into a digital Swiss army knife, if you will. They do everything, right? So here's a bit of a curveball for our viewers. They're probably expecting me to say, oh, buy this, you know, there's this iPhone and Samsung. But this Sony Z, uh, Z1 Compact uh, phone is amazing. It is uh, the successor to last year's model, which was also an award-winning phone. Sony is very underrated when it comes to their Android devices. So this is a full KitKat phone with uh, a 4.3-inch HD screen, a 20.7 megapixel sensor for taking great-looking shots, uh, and uh, you know, a fast uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 processor in plain English, just amazing performance for all your games. And speaking of that HD screen, it has 342 pixels per inch. So that, that is compared to 326 for the iPhone. So uh, you're packing a lot more pixels into that same space. Just amazing video quality that you really have to see to believe. So a great waterproof phone, no less. Also with NFC and um, expandable memory, the list goes on and on. This is one that you're going to want to check out. Sony, once again, is uh, outdoing itself in the, in the mobile department. Okay, that's great. I think you've got me convinced on that. So, But let's take a look at another option that uh, might have a little bit of a different take. Sure. So this is going to be, I think, probably one of the best-selling phones of the year in 2014 when it comes out in April. This is the Samsung Galaxy S5. Of course, it was unveiled at the recent uh, Barcelona show, Mobile World Congress. So this is a, a gorgeous, slightly larger phone than the Galaxy S4, but not as big as the... Uh, Galaxy Note, which is, you know, the, the, the super-sized phablet, if you will. There's a couple of cool things here. Heart rate sensor, fingerprints uh, uh, recognition as well to log in, similar to the iPhone 5S, and a great camera that also can focus after you've taken the shot. So uh, similar to some of those Lytra cameras where you, even if it's blurry, you can readjust the uh, focus later on. So there's a lot of buzz about the Samsung Galaxy S5. Uh, and, of course, it will work with a number of different smartwatches that Samsung is also readying in yeah, time for the S5. You're up over there, Mark. You're pulling out devices from every which way, like uh, Inspector Gadget with That's the same here. I like it. <laughs> Occupational like hazard. I, I do need to do my upgrades. I think I'm falling behind. Let me ask you really quick. I know we didn't really talk about this earlier when we spoke, but iPhone 6, there's buzz that is coming this year. Do you, can you tell us if you think that's going to have an impact in the world of upgrades? So, of course, it's Apple. So even though, um, you know, it's always sort of an iterative update, it's a lot more evolutionary than revolutionary, they still sell a ton of phones. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, only at this point, rumors uh, about what the iPhone 6 is going to look like, but the, the buzz is that's going to be a larger phone, you know, thinner, faster processor, all those upgrades that Apple usually squeezes in. And then there's a few wild cards. Well, well, we'll see if it does that. But it'll be a big seller, no doubt. It is Apple. You can't discount them. Even though Android has a lot more buzz now, there's no question Apple is uh, very much in it to win it. Well, they're a marketing machine. That's a good segue, though, for us looking at what's coming up in the future because we kind of got through our 10, but in the last couple of minutes here, maybe I could just throw to you, Mark, like there's some big technologies we read about online uh, from 3D printing and a few other things. 
can you just give us kind of a round of some of the big things you see that are coming out this year? And let's maybe start with the 3D printing, for example. Right. So for sure, 3D printing is uh, poised to be a big deal. I don't think it's going to, you know, replace your 2D printer anytime soon. But the idea is that you can create an object in your home, and you don't need a degree in computer engineering to do it. So uh, we'll see this summer the first sub one thousand dollar 3D printer from 3D Systems. It'll let you create an item that's six inches by six inches by six inches. I could have just said six inches cubed. I don't know why I didn't. But the idea is that you can create a, a coffee mug. You can create an iPhone case. You can create action figures, chess pieces. You know, if you have an idea, a million dollar idea, instead of spending the money to outsource that prototype, do it from home. You can share blueprints of these products. Uh, two different colors for the, uh, the 3D Systems Cube 3 that's coming out. Uh, some of the higher end printers can do 10 inches cube uh, and multiple colors. But certainly a big buzz about 3D printing this year. Yeah, I think not just on the personal level, but on an industrial level, obviously, it's going to have a big impact across the board. Let's talk uh, Google Glass. Right. So we talked a little bit about wearable tech earlier. We talked about fitness bands, but Google Glass, which is, a, is probably going to hit uh, the stores this summer and available online, is a, a wearable piece of technology. It is essentially a computer or a, a companion device to your mobile phone that looks like a pair of eyeglasses at first glance, but there's no lenses in them. Unless you need prescription lenses, it will support them. It's essentially a frame with a camera in the middle that can take pictures or shoot video, a small, L a small screen that hovers over the right right eye that you can sort of see through when content is coming in and the right side of the frame has sort of like a touch sensor for a mouse where you use your fingertip. There's a video of me uh, on askmen.com talking about uh, Google Glass. I don't think it's going to be a mainstream uh, phenomenon out the gate. I think you know early adopters with deep pockets are going to love the ability to walk down the street and get directions without having to stare at their phone or see who's texting them or see who's calling, take a picture. But naturally, there's also some privacy and security concerns that also need to be ironed out. Yeah, I think that's definitely going to be one of the big questions as we move forward with that. I don't want to rush you here. we got one more space for you. I know you talked about some other piece of tech. Or you want to throw one more kind of uh, idea of what we can look for in something else this year? Yeah, how about dash cams? Let's leave off on that. Uh, you know, having a camera everywhere is very normal these days, in your phone, uh, you know, in your glasses, as we just talked about. Uh, and then there's, of course, the, the whole action camera explosion, like the GoPros, where you mount a camera for a first-person perspective. But I do predict that dashboard cameras or dash cams will be a very big deal in 2014 and going forward. It captures everything that's happening uh, in front of you. Uh, it's on a loop, so it'll record a few hours of HD video to uh, ex expandable memory that uh, you can take out and watch it later on a computer or there's usually a little screen. There's also sensors in it that if it detects an incident or an accident, it will automatically geotag it with the location. It'll archive it, tell you the time and the place. Uh, should you ever need it for legal reasons or you know it's just great to have it so dashboard cams definitely is something to, to watch for. Wow okay well you've given us a lot to think about here I want to just advise anybody watching you can check the link that is in the invitation to the Google Hangout you can actually take a look at the article that can focus on some of the products Mark here has talked about. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. Mark I can't thank you enough for joining us for all your your technology you've definitely just flushed my bank account right down the top because I got so excited about everything. Um, any parting words? Well, I just want to say thanks again, Mike, and to AskMan.com and uh, to uh, Lexus, our sponsor. It's been great chatting, talking tech with you, and covering a wide assortment of products. Uh, we have an article up on AskMan.com that outlines a lot of these products as well if you want a deeper dive. So I want to thank our viewers as well for tuning in, and I hope you uh, had some fun and learned something at the same time. Well, I know I did for sure. So thanks so much, Mark. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you on our next uh, thank you, Lexus. We'll see you on our next special edition Google Hangout. Stay tuned for more. Take care, Mark. Cheers. Thanks. Mm -hmm.